Fellow Psychonauts, I am tired. I am just so tired of the top psychedelic influencers propagating and platforming misinformation. I mean, also because of art school, but mostly because of the psychedelic misinformation. Let me explain. For a long time, Dakota of Earth was one of my favorite psychedelic YouTubers. Because even though he entertained outlandish theories, he always seemed to me to be fairly rational. I no longer think this. He started getting sponsorships from Gaia.com and like, I totally understand that in our capitalist society, you basically need to take sponsors in order to cover your bills as a YouTuber. And I mean, these exorbitant trips don't pay for themselves, you know. But promoting and putting your face behind a conspiracy cesspool is low. Like you have to pick and choose your sponsors, you know? Cause your followers look up to you and it's just not responsible to lead an audience to these places. Then last month on Instagram, Dakota was complaining that his recent podcast was taken down. Why? Because his guest was David Ick. Ick was banned off YouTube last year for spreading atrocious falsehoods that the pandemic was planned and that the vaccines are a tool to brainwash us. For that reason, I'm not able to show any clips from the podcast itself. I'm sure you'll be able to find it if you want to corroborate my points. Seeing how the pandemic was exacerbated and prolonged, in part, by prominent figures claiming, without any evidence whatsoever, that the top medical experts are wrong at best, and at worst, deliberately lying to us in order to make a population of docile sheep that can be more easily controlled. Of course, these conspiracies come in all sorts of flavors, but David Ick's brand is especially out there. The sky fully believes that many of the world leaders, since at least the Roman Empire, are shape-shifting alien lizards that feed off of humanity's fear through the fourth dimension. So what is the evidence that Ick provides to support this tremendously bold claim? Well, in the late 1980s, Ick experienced auditory hallucinations, hearing voices telling him that he was God's messenger. And he claims that he's been on a synchronistic journey to spread this truth ever since. That's it. Despite Ick's senseless claims, the pandemic is very real and many, many people have died as a result. It is beyond disrespectful to suggest that these grieving families are liars. Let me give you an analogy. It is fine and fair to question if aliens have made contact with humans, to ponder our existence, and to contemplate whether reality is even real in the first place. But let's imagine for a moment that someone was dying in a seriously critical state and trained people are trying to help them. If you were to walk up and claim that this person is actually okay or make any other assertion not based in evidence, you are no longer just free thinking. You are actively obstructing this person from getting legitimate life-saving care. Hopefully that example helps clarify when free thinking crosses the line from harmless to harmful. And that is my explanation to the people in my comment section who inevitably will accuse me of being dramatic and just disagreeing over mere opinions. There is a big difference between disagreeing over something like pizza toppings and denying the reality that the global pandemic and climate crisis are actively endangering lives. Surprisingly, Ick's theories do bear some similarities to Marxism in that he correctly characterized the American two-party system as a false democracy, that an elite is oppressing the majority and they use forms of terror tactics in order to maintain their class. However, this elite class is the human bourgeois not alien reptiles. Marxism uses dialectical materialism to analyze our historical political circumstance, and it works exceptionally well at describing our world today. Hence why Marx was able to accurately predict the exponential wealth disparity as well as the destruction and squandering of the world's resources that we currently observe today. David Ick serves to delegitimize the revolutionary class struggle with needless fantasies. There is plenty, plenty of proven legitimate crimes of the bourgeois capitalist class to justify revolutionary action. According to Ick, to defeat the evil lizard alien elite, all we need to do is say no. Pack up your bags, Biden. Me and the boys say no. The Venn diagram between David Ick and Nancy Reagan. <laughs> okay. 
There is not one example in history where simply saying no has been sufficient to free a population from the imposed oppressive system. What has worked historically is organizing in solidarity and uniting to force a new ethical system. In order to do that, there needs to be consensus on our collective state. And these conspiracies are not useful and add nothing. Marx and Engels referred to this type of phenomenon as false consciousness. Ick is not wrong when he claims that the majority of the population is being exploited and oppressed. It's just that he created a myth that simplifies our circumstance into absurdity. Like, if I were to say that my cat Mitz was actually the one running the world and helped humans evolve from primates, why should you believe it? That claim has the exact same amount of evidence, the only difference is how convincingly I communicate this baseless theory. Maybe I'll write a book about it. If you can be convinced into anti-science positions, then you can choose to believe anything that you can understand or relate to. I had a period in my life when I seriously and earnestly entertained conspiracies. From the flat earth theory, to the electric universe theory, to the hollow world theory. I totally delved in and learned all I could. What all these conspiracies had in common was that the fundamental axiom was that science is a lie. Don't believe rigorously tested, peer-reviewed, evidence-based theories. Believe my theory that doesn't have any of that stuff. I've noticed that in the brief time I really deeply considered the possibility that science was a lie, I had a sense of being in the loop, of being in that small group of people that could see the truth. And I don't think that it was a coincidence that this era was directly after a year of much psychedelic experimentation. I don't believe that psychedelics inherently makes a person reject science, but to put it briefly, it's that these substances dampen the default mode network where our habitual ways of thinking and operating are produced. So by having even just a short break from the default way of being, can put one in a state of open-mindedness. This often leads people to reconsider their beliefs, which can be very healthy, but it can also lead people to conspiracies, to cults, and to pseudoscience. So I strongly believe that Dakota of Earth as a psychedelic influencer, for lack of better terms, has a great responsibility to his sizable fan base to not promote baseless and vastly harmful falsehoods. People, especially after psychedelic experiences, naturally look to others to reorient themselves in a confusing world. Would it not be pretty shitty of me to say to my subscribers, don't get chemotherapy if you have cancer or insulin if you have diabetes, because it is filled with demons and microchips, or whatever. Yes. Yes, it would be. Dakota claimed he cut out the COVID-related stuff so YouTube would allow the interview on their platform. And shockingly, they still took it down. All they did was talk about spirituality. Also, that the world was run by reptilian overlords, that Black Lives Matter is a psyop, and that, oh yeah, that climate change is a hoax. Riveting stuff. Very spiritual. I feel so enlightened. <laughs> this is not an attack on our free speech. YouTube is a corporation with responsibilities of its own. Now, by no means am I saying that YouTube is beyond critique, or that people should be silenced for bad takes, but to claim that they are suppressing the truth by not allowing dangerous misinformation to be spread on their website is frankly ridiculous. And that is exactly what Dakota attempted to do. At no point during this awful podcast did Dakota ask, what if you're wrong? How can you be sure? Instead, he nodded, agreed, and supported these ideas. I really hope that Dakota takes this podcast down or at least denounces the ideas and apologizes. But he most likely won't because he's built his platform with these conspiracy theorists. It's shameful, really. Very sad. But what do you think? Do you think people should be allowed to say anything on YouTube, no matter how harmful? Also, what do you think about platformer responsibility to their audience? Do they have a responsibility? Comment hail overlord mitts <laughs> to make sure you're a free thinker. A big, big thank you to all the interbeings on Patreon for making this video possible and helping feed me and my partner while we're in school. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next week. Until then, trip safe and stay rational.